every day of these three years as a developer, I said to myself, this, this is not me. <laughs> this is not me. By the way, I knew it also during my studies. Okay, I wasn't the best student in, as, a, as an engineer and definitely not as a developer. And uh, eventually I said, I, I'm a people person. I want to go out and meet people in my job, in my day-to-day -day job. I don't want to spend my time uh, debugging. It doesn't bring my, my full uh, you know, self-expression. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Laumi Tech and sponsored by Hippo Insurance, Turing, Upwest Labs, and Hillel at Stanford. Bitcoin and FinTech. Meet Sagi Bakshi, the CEO of CoinMama. Sagi is a computer science engineer with over 20 years of experience in the tech industry and an extensive background in telecommunications, ad tech, and blockchain technologies. He joins CoinMama from tech unicorn IronSource, which recently announced their IPO intention with an estimated valuation of $6 to $8 billion, where he was a member of the founding team and, from 2011 to 2018, served as general manager of the company's biggest division. Sagi Bakshi, thank you for joining me on 20 Minute Leaders. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Thank you very much, Michael. I see the, the beautiful skyline uh, behind you. Uh, where are you right now? Uh, Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv behind me. Of course. So, again, your journey is uh, remarkable. It's, it's uh, fascinating. And the reason why I'm, I'm excited is because, you know, on the out, from the outside, looking into your journey, you're like, yes, of course, he, it makes perfect sense what he did. But, you know, just before we started recording this, you mentioned that, you know, one of the, one of the themes that you're looking back on your journey is that, you know, sometimes you realize that you were doing things that you weren't meant to be doing and you weren't really enjoying or weren't good fit for. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about those things and talk about your insights from your journey, as well as Bitcoin, the real, the, the crypto revolution, and, and of course, Coin Mama. So Sagi, take me all the way back as far as you want. Who is Sagi Bakshi and, and walk me a little bit through your journey. Okay, I know a lot of uh, people, a lot of uh, youngsters, you know, you finish high school, you don't know what you want to do. What, you don't know what you want to do when you grow up. And the first junction of, uh, the first big decision you, you need to take is what, uh, what kind of, what major to do in, in college, in, in university. Uh, I didn't really know what I want to do. So I went to something that looks very lucrative, very wanted at that time. It was 1998, and the telecom and the high-tech uh, boom was, was uh, right, like what we see now in, in uh, crypto, almost the same. So I went to study a, a communication, com system, communication systems uh, engineering, okay? And my first job was as a developer, as an engineer, in, in, a, in a startup that was acquired by uh, Cisco Systems. Now, I spent there three years in which every day of these three years as a developer, I said to myself, this, this is not me, <laughs> this is not me. By the way, I knew it also during my studies. Okay, I wasn't the best student in, as, a, as an engineer and definitely not as a developer. Uh, eventually I said, I, I'm a people person. I want to go out and meet people in my job, in my day-to-day -day job. I don't want to spend my time uh, debugging. Uh, I, I wasn't good at it. And I knew that it doesn't bring my, my full uh, you know, self-expression. My next job was a pre-sale engineer. Pre-sale, it means you go out um, together with a sales person and you communicate with the engineers on the other side of the customer and you build network architecture for uh, internet service providers, for example. And I, we were selling telecom equipment to, to the biggest uh, telecom providers. At that period, I traveled a lot. So I think it was amazing for, for, you know, for a 27, 28 year old to travel and, and, and explore different cultures and different management systems of how to manage right. companies. And I encounter how the Chinese are doing it, how the Europeans are, do, are doing it, how the United States is doing it, and how uh, Latin America is doing it. Everyone is doing it differently. 
And it depends if you are a small startup or, or a big corporate. Uh, now, Sagi, I do have to ask a, a question that I think is hugely relevant to so many people that I know. And this idea of, you know, being in a place where, you know, the norm is saying one thing, you're rationalizing a, a certain journey for a career trajectory, like, you know, being an engineer, being a developer. For three years, you realize that this is probably not the best place for you. And what I'm curious about is both why is it three years instead of, you know, half a year and, you know, higher, slow, fire, fast, also yourself. And the other question is, how do you even get the courage to go and do that? Because most people that I know wouldn't even, wouldn't even be able to leave after three years. They would just do it for life. Yeah. If you work in Cisco, you don't leave. You, you have to be <laughs> crazy to leave Cisco. Cisco used to be the best employer in the world. People and, you know, my friends thought that I'm crazy. I, I left uh, to a small startup and, and I actually, I mean, I was young. I'm, I'm an adventure, okay, an adventurous uh, person. I think uh, I, I said this is the time to take risks, and, and obviously it wasn't that a big of a risk because I stayed in telecom industry. I stayed as an engineer doing something a bit different. So it wouldn't say that was the, the, the big uh, leap of faith, but later on, a friend, a childhood friend of mine called me and said, look, I'm... I'm setting up a, a bootstrap and I want you to join. It's going to be cool, a startup around the internet. <laughs> and I said, I don't know. I don't know. I have a, 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 a good career path in front of me. I'm in the telecom industry. I'm an engineer. I'm not sure about the internet. I'm not sure about my, um, ad, ad tech. You know, it was around ad tech. Uh, eventually I joined. After uh, you know a few months that he that he kept calling me and later on that company is known today as Iron Source, one of the biggest 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 unicorns in Israel. Uh, we are going are going to to an IPO very soon. It, it's a it's a huge success story. I've been there eight years, and I was so lucky to be part of that journey uh, as the first employee of that company. And then I unbelievable. Had the, First chance to actually to lead people and to manage, and I managed their uh, a division of 200 employees. It was amazing, uh, and and that wow. was the moment where I said, "This is my self-expression. Okay, this is my zone. This is what I like to do to lead people around technology." So my technological background really, really helped me to lead that kind of of, of a startup. Uh, but well, I have to hear a little bit about that first employee experience a little bit because you know very few people get to be first employees at a startup let alone a startup that is a an israeli unicorn that is going to ipo so you know looking back what what, what are some of the, you know the, the the crazy experiences of, of a first employee are you you know do you realize you're part of this rocket ship do you do you join in on the on the founders on, on their journey like what, what is the sort of like relationship you have with this rocket ship that's going yeah, so at first, I mean, there was a, a feeling that this is going to be big. There was a feeling in the early days as well. We were kind of uh, hyped and everyone in Tel Aviv was talking about us, so it was fun. But, uh, you know, we needed to organize a company. We needed to build infrastructure to grow. We were five people, four founders and one employee. And then we realized, okay, this employee, myself, he needs a, a paycheck. How do we issue a paycheck? We need to establish the, comp the company. We need to register the company. So, wow. And then I said, okay, I don't have a contract. Let's find a template for, a con for a hiring a new employees. So I went to the internet and find a template for a contract. We, we did everything by ourselves, obviously. And then the privilege of building a company is like everything you learned up until that moment you put it and you design it as you wish, as you think a company should be. And, and it's a great uh, privilege. I mean, it's a, it's a joyful uh, uh, journey. You recruit the, the people you want, that you believe. I mean, it's, it's great to be the boss. Eventually, you do a lot of mistakes as, as a startup. You never did it before. You, you do a lot of mistakes along the way. Uh, but I think the team there was super, super strong. And up until today, 
I mean, they have a lot of amazing founders. They are like, I think, 10 different founders joined together as a group. Each one of them is like, a, you know, the, each one has a different superpower and, and the CEO there is amazing. What, what did you learn most from watching the company and being a part of that growth all the way up to managing? You said 200 people. You're going from being a single employee to now being a general manager of the largest division and managing 200 people. What, what did you have to learn along the way that looking back, you're like, wow, like that's really, really cool. It's all about the people. I mean, it's, it's a very well-known phrase, but it, it's actually, you learn it in the hard way. It's all about the people. If you recruit carefully, hire slowly, and, and you do not compromise on the quality of the people that you uh, onboard to your team, you are doing something good. You can wait, I don't know, six months, 12 months to man a position, and, and you don't compromise. Every wrong decision in hiring will cost the company a lot of money and time, and it will reflect poorly on the other team members. So right. hiring is, is one of the most important jobs of the CEO. The CEO needs to be part of hiring process. Obviously, you cannot do it uh, in, a, in an 800 employees, 800, uh, employees uh, company, but up until the moment that you can, you should interview and should be part of the hiring process. Amazing. So, Sagi, now you've moved a little bit from ad tech. You're entering the, the crazy world of, of crypto and cryptocurrencies. And, and I'd love to, to first understand a little bit better the, the, the Bitcoin revolution, the cryptocurrency revolution. What, where are we in 2021? We've been hearing about this for a while. I've been you know, seeing my friends almost having heart attacks every day that they're watching uh, their, their uh, you know, fraction of a Bitcoin go up and down dramatically. And, and today you're also the CEO of Coin Mama, And I'd love to hear a little bit about what that's about. About. So, so Sagi, please, you know, help me understand a little bit better what's happening with our world today. Okay, so Bitcoin uh, was established like I can, it was a test. It was a, an experiment of a cryptographer, anonymous cryptographer called uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. He issued a white paper, and that brilliant nine pages white paper is about to change the world. Okay, it's about to change everything in our way of how do we transfer value to each other and how do we interact. And he actually solved a very, very difficult and hundreds of years of a, of a, of a problem, algorithmic problem, uh, to how to create trust between several parties that do not trust each other. I mean, nice. in order to transfer money or value from me to you, we need to trust someone. So up until today, we trusted a third party called a bank. Uh, or if you do it on a Venmo or something like that, you trust Venmo, which trust the bank. A lot of entities involved in this process. Satoshi actually created the first chain, the first network that people can store value and transfer value to each other solely depending on algorithms. Okay, and that these are transparent algorithms. Everyone knows what is going on on the blockchain. Everyone can understand. So we totally believe that this technology is about to change the world. I don't think we experienced it yet. Okay. Uh, everyone is talking about Bitcoin. Some people are doubling with the idea of uh, buying a little bit, but we, it didn't start yet. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a technology shift. It's a mindset shift. People trust uh, today, they think they trust th their governments, th their banks, uh, but it will take time for them to understand that there is a new way to store value. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's the first time in history that you can actually own something without having to protect it with guns or with big fences, okay? Right. You can store your entire family wealth in your head by memorizing 12 words of, of the seed phrase, okay? And you can carry your family wealth, your generation wealth in your head, traveling around the world, memorizing 12 words, that's it. 
and then you can pass borders and then you can escape any tyranny any dictatorships any checkpoints in borders if you're a refugee you can send money to your families uh, you know in, in remittance uh, transactions that today cost 10 percent or 11 percent right. when when you are a philippine employee who wants to send uh, money back to your family so many use cases and and, and bitcoin is is a totally aligned with the human rights movement that will allow more freedom and more more uh, so self-sovereignty to 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 the unbanked people there are around two billion people around the world that don't have any access to bank services wow all you need is a all you need is a smartphone and it's probably going to be so, much faster for them to get an internet connection than for them to have another branch of their local bank coming to their to their rural area right yeah for example in africa with i mean there's the whole notion of skipping the the laptop okay laptop is too expensive no one people in africa don't have uh, enough uh, money to buy a laptop but so they skipped it and they own feature phones and smartphones and that's their connectivity to the internet and obviously they need to uh, improve the infrastructure of the internet there but we're already seeing an increase of usage of uh, cryptocurrency in, in africa so the vision of coin mama that's why i joined coin mama even though i had an amazing job an amazing challenge an amazing team at iron source this is what motivates me okay this is my passion it's like the real vision of what is going to happen in the next 10 to 20 years in this field of currencies of how to create value how to move value and how to store value using cryptography and, and computer science only okay so that's why i joined coin mama as the ceo like a, a year and a half ago and it's an online company okay we sell bitcoin to 190 countries in wow. the world uh, it's a growing startup and and we are so happy and and we, we are so lucky to do what we do we come every morning with joy with a smile and you say how lucky we are to to participate in this uh, revolution uh, coin mama today is has 60 employees wow. Uh, in two countries, in Ireland, in Ireland we have a, an office in Ireland, a, a daughter company there with six employees, and the majority is here in Israel, in uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, a lot of R&D, a lot of data science, a lot of uh, analysts. Um, we are selling Bitcoin. We are not an exchange, okay? It's, it's just an OTC, an over-the-counter. It means when you come and register and, and upload your uh, a documentation and we approve you you can buy bitcoin from us you just upload some payment method i will pay with uh, apple pay or or you just a credit card or or bank wire and you get the bitcoin from us so we are a counterparty to this uh, transaction you have to bring your own wallet you have to know what you do we encourage everyone to not buy if you don't know what you are buying learn what is bitcoin first go online take some time takes a few take a few days con con consult your friends understand exactly what is bitcoin otherwise if you buy in order to get rich fast you will that's the fastest way to get there to be poor okay you're going to lose everything if you don't know what you're buying it's a risky asset yes it's it's very young that's why it's so volatile but you need strong conviction. You need to understand what you're doing in order to be able to hold to hold it right. and, and to overcome this uh, right. crazy volatility. In the so market. what I'm hearing from you, Sagi, is that on one hand, you're saying, listen, I have no doubt that the future is going to be different for us all. It's going to have this decentralized trust mechanism where all you really need in order to manage your wealth is this seed of 12 words that you memorized. On the other hand, you know, we're today in 2021, we're just seeing this rise. We're talking about a huge consumer shift and whoever wants to be part of this and ride that first wave need to have, you know, to take some responsibility with, you know, managing the, the, the volatility of that first wave. But in the long run, it doesn't sound like you have many, you know, 
you, you're not you, you don't think that there is a chance even that this is not going to take the world by a storm that's what i'm gathering from the, from what you're saying right not the chance mm -hmm. not the chance now obviously in 1995 or 1996 like after a, a jeff bezos said i'm going to sell books online right so people said are you <laughs> Who is going to put credit card details online on the internet? Are you crazy? And he said, yes, yes, they are going to put some credit card details and, and they will buy books for me. Eventually, he said, no, people will buy not only books. They will buy, the internet is going to be huge and, and it will serve us in, in many different areas of, of, uh, of our lives. And that was 1997, 1998. And that's when you need true vision for 20 years. Right. So this is where we are today, 25 years after uh, the first idea, more or less, of, uh, of Jeff Bezos. And, and only if you stick to the vision, if you're true, a true believer, you can make this kind of uh, revolutions. And, and, and the world needs this revolution. The world needs a better, a stable, a better way to transfer value. We cannot trust our government currency. I, I, I can say that in, our, in my own country. I can understand people in the United States who are saying it. I can understand people in the European Union saying it. Uh, every government uh, tends to fail uh, their economy. Every tends, uh, few tends to right. fail. Right. So, we need an internet account. Sagi, uh, the one thing that I'm leaving here with certainty is that I need to go do a lot more research because I think that I, I, I you know, I, I undervalued and I think that a lot of the people that I talked to, I was wealthy, you know, we look at Bitcoin as this interesting asset to, to trade with today. But what you're referring to is just a, a much, much bigger consumer shift in, in you know, in, in, communities that I'm not, I wasn't even thinking of. I wasn't even thinking of, of how, you know, this decentralized system is going to impact the 2 billion people that aren't connected to the financial grid today. And you're looking at, uh, and, you know, I can definitely start, you know, seeing the seeds of, of how this is completely going to revolutionize, you know, every industry, not just, this, not just the financial. So thank you for opening my mind to that. And, and I have my homework cut out for me. Before we leave, Sagi, I have to ask the most important question, which is three words that you would use to describe yourself. Okay, so I'm a social animal. I, I am adventurous. And I'm a dad. I love that. I think that's, Sagi. That, that's the love in my heart is, is for my Sagi, kids. thank you very, very much. Best of luck with Coin Mama. Thank you for sharing with me your journey all the way from, from you know, being an engineer, realizing that you're probably not, go, you're not trying or not going to be the best engineer in the room. Nevertheless, going to become the first employee of Iron Source, one of the Israel's biggest prides to now joining Coin Mama and being a part of what seems to be an inevitable and awesome revolution. So uh, thank you for the positive impact you're making and thank you for spending your time with me here. Sure, thanks a lot. Take care, thank you.